Another big case for Mr. Donnelly was when he represented Ronnie Spector and the Ronettes against Phil Spector. If you're not familiar with the Ronettes, check out this song. It's one of my all-time favorites. Well, um, it was kind of like what I was describing to you before as being a member of the litigation team where um, Phil Spector had um, just flat out stopped paying royalties uh, to Ronnie Spector. He, um, despite the fact that, you know, the Ronettes uh, had, you know, several top ten songs uh, during the 60s. Um, and. Uh, his rationale for doing it was that he said when he was met while he was married to her when they split up their marriage she agreed that as part of the, the uh, settlement agreement that she would not be paid any further royalties well first of all that was not true but even if it arguendo you accepted his argument um, as having some validity which the court didn't um, you why did he stop paying the other two Ronettes, who he wasn't married to? Um, so it was just a, you know, it was all bogus. And uh, um, he, was, Phil Spector's an interesting character, very eccentric, as you saw in his last trial. Uh, in this civil trial, he testified, and uh, I remember the our litigator Alex Peltz asked him. Uh, he said, "Mr. Spector, when you recorded uh, songs like Be My Baby, Baby I Love You, Walking in the Rain, how much did it cost you to make those masters?" And he said, "Well, it cost about fifteen hundred dollars each." He said, "And when did you uh, recoup that fifteen hundred dollars?" And he said, oh, I've never recouped the $1,500. Um, and uh, up to that time, we had an elderly woman judge who I felt didn't really understand the music industry all that well. She looked like the last album that she had ever bought was Sing Along with Mitch, you know. Um, and uh, But when he gave that answer, she stopped the proceedings and she leaned over to him and, and she said, wait a minute, let me get this straight. Are you saying, is it your testimony that you've never made back the $1,500 that, that you, it cost you to make a song like Be My Baby? And he said, that's right. I knew that that lie, okay, which was, you know, it was a, a bold-faced, ridiculous statement um, that I knew we won the case because, you know, he, he, it, he was so flagrant and, uh, I mean, if if you took nothing else, if you took the, the, the movie Dirty Dancing, which the lead song is Be My Baby, okay, um, and, you know, and just took the the, the income from that movie and the income from the 
soundtrack album from that movie. Took nothing else, no other commercials, no other uses. That alone probably generated a million bucks, you know. Um, so, uh, you know, so it was, you know, ridiculous, to, you know, on his part.